Hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. I am finally getting everything together to do the comparison of five different cylinders for the uh, MS390, so or the O39, whatever you want to call it. So what we have here, we have, I've heard these called, this is the cheapest you can get, and I've heard them called white box cylinders, right? There's no branding, they just come in a white box. Right here we have a Warhawk cylinder. This is a highway cylinder and this is the Duke cylinder. And up there in the vise we have the OEM cylinder. So let's go ahead and take the OEM cylinder out so that we can have direct comparison with AirTang. First off, I want to talk about these bolts holding everything together. These bolts are self-threading bolts. And my best guess is they are what threaded these holes in the OEM cylinder. Um, but definitely everything else that I got aside from one, right? All of these cylinders, except for the Warhawk, all of these needed the OEM screws, ran through and they tapped themselves. They thread themselves in. The Warhawk, however, came with its own, uh, um, its own bolts. And instead of the Torx head, these are Allen heads and they were pre-threaded. However, they were really poorly pre-threaded. Nothing seemed to work right. I got one bolt stuck in there so hard that I felt like I was gonna break the head of it off whenever I was trying to remove it. Terrible, terrible, terrible. You can see right here, this is the bolt that got stuck. So, yeah, it's freaking ripped the threads off of the bolt and everything. And now we're going to get into the numbers as well. Uh, before we do that, though, uh, simple little differences. For one, look at that Dukes. What does that tell you? I don't know. Uh, does it tell me that it's made of better aluminum, lower quality aluminum? Has it been blasted with walnut shells? I don't know. All right. Uh, also, the white box and the Dukes are the only ones that have this little lip underneath, you know, right there. See that? They got this little indention um, on the intake. Um, don't know what's up with that. The OEM one does have it as well, but neither the Warhawk nor the Highway have it. Little differences. Also, little differences. The highway cylinder is, mm, no, I'm sorry, the Warhawk cylinder, it doesn't have as many fins. Let's see if I can get this here. See that? The Warhawk cylinder is missing a fin. And the, yeah. It's different down here as well in the impulse. None of the rest of them are like that. So, good or bad, indifferent. I would say indifferent, doesn't make any difference. Uh, and then the final big, huge difference is the highway cylinder is the only cylinder that has this really weird, um, pseudo closed port setup it's meaningless it really there is no purpose in it whatsoever because um let's see here All right, there we are okay so let's say this part right here is eating up some of your crankcase volume which can be a very good thing with an open port cylinder well it's completely negated because this area right here 
has the stud that, that separates it, the divider here, right there, that right there, that normally goes all the way up, which that right there is gonna take up a lot of material. So any, any shrinking of the crankcase because you've added in those, um, these right here, is just completely negated because you remove that upper portion. So you can see right here that that divider goes all the way up. But so the OEM is a completely an open port setup. I've had some people say that they think they've heard of an OEM one. Some of the years of the OEMs were actually closed port. I've never seen that. I cannot confirm that at all, and I actually disbelieve it. Maybe someday I'll see a OEM setup that is just like this highway setup. I don't think it exists though. I think that highway just did this because highway did it. That's what I think. Okay, so on with it. Let's talk about the numbers. All right. First up is the white box. This white box setup here had um, pretty poor steps. You can see it there, that ring right there. That is pretty much all the way around. Even on the sides there, you can see it. And what this causes is it causes it to be very difficult for your to compress that ring and get your piston and ring up in there. It just, to get over that step, you've got to take a screwdriver and poke, 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 poke to get it to go up in there. Pain in the ass. But let's go over the numbers. Numbers are, bum, 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 get my old man glasses. 68,000 squish. Ugh. Uh, that is terrible, right? Um, 78.5 on the intake. Uh, the exhaust is at 96 degrees. So not only does it have this crazy huge squish, it also has a 96 degree exhaust roof, which leads to an extremely low compression saw. Uh, this saw probably, I wish I had checked it. I did not. There's only so much I can do. Uh, but I probably bet you it was definitely no more than 120 psi um it just couldn't have been but anyways um and the transfers came on at 125. the warhawk cylinder um i did notice wait a minute, yeah i did notice that the the piston went right up in there and you can see it's like it's that ledge has been machined off So it's like they just machined that ledge off and smoothed it over. Uh, and so, yeah, the piston just whoop, went right up in there. It was no problem. Um, let's see. The squish on the Warhawk, 44 thousandths. Okay, that's not too bad. Um, 76.8 on the intake. Not quite as much intake duration as the white box had. But, you know, 76.8. That's roughly 77. That's about where you probably want to be. The exhaust was 101. And then the transfers were 125. So that right there has got some decent numbers. I bet you this cylinder would run pretty all right. Next up, the highway. The highway. All right. Highway also 44,000 squish. Intake is at 79.8. So that's, that's 80. You know, I mean, it's got 80 on the intake. The exhaust is at 99, reasonable. And the transfers, again, 125 on the transfers. So I bet you this would run good, right? I bet you the 44 on the squish, 80 on the intake, and uh, the exhaust is at 99. I'd like to see that exhaust at 100, 100, 101. However, it's not. 99 is probably going to be fine, especially if you just throw a pop-up piston in there. Okay, um, next up, so the Dukes. 65,000 squish. Mm. 
It's same as the white box, pretty much. Uh, the intake, 74.5. Whoa, that's a low uh, intake compared to everything else. Everything else thus far, we've seen 78.5, 76.8, 79.8, and then the Dukes comes in at 74.5. Um, the exhaust on the Dukes, 95.6, and uh, the transfers were at 119. So, out of all of these, all right, we got the white box, we got the Warhawk, we got the highway, and we got the Dukes. The white box and the Dukes seem to be like maybe they're the same cylinder setup, or they're, they're really close. They're really, really, really close. Uh, both of them have huge squish and they have a really high exhaust roof. What that gives you is very low compression. Now, commonly folks will say, well, just add a pop-up piston and they'll fix that. Well, yeah, it'll get it to run better, but you know, you're gonna go from say, I don't know, 118, 120 pounds of compression to 125. 130 pounds of compression, you're still at really low compression. And I don't like that, all right? The Warhawk and the Highway, both of them have a 44,000 squish, all right? Which is still a big, it's still a big fat squish, okay? But you throw a pop-up piston in there, you're pretty all right. The Warhawk, though, uh, was at 101 on the exhaust and the highway was at 99. Um, the Warhawk was at 77 on the intake. The highway was at 80. And then both of them, the transfers were at 125. So if I was building a saw out of the four of these, I'd pick the Warhawk. Um, I'd pick the Warhawk and I would be prepared to drill and tap these holes or, or, or do not use the studs that come with, right? Because these things are awful, right? And they don't cut like they should. Out of four, that's the only one that went in slick. <laughs> All the rest of them were problematic. Um, so be prepared for that. So what I would do, I think, I think what I would do if I got a Warhawk, I would find out the thread pitch of this, which I can do really quick. Ta-da! That's a six millimeter by one. Ooh, can you see that? There it is. Six millimeter, 1.0. I would get a tap and I would tap those threads on the Warhawk before I even tried to install these. Um, but yeah, the Warhawk has totally decent numbers. 101 on the exhaust with a high compression piston is gonna give you real good compression and it'd run really well. The only thing that it needs, I think, and it's really, it's not, it's not bad at all. It's got 76.8 for the intake. I'm calling it 77 on the intake. Um, if I wanted a little bit more, I would just take a little bit off, but honestly, 77 on the intake, I bet you it would flow really nicely. So. Anywho, now, OEM. We haven't mentioned the OEM. What are the OEM numbers? This is where it gets kind of tasty, right? The OEM, 45,000 squish, 77.8 on the intake, which is, from what my experience, extremely high on the intake for, a, a, well, mostly anything, but definitely for a steel. Um, exhaust is at 97. What are they thinking? What, what are they thinking? What? Anyways, uh, transfers at 125. So, yeah, not very good numbers. Um, 
not very good numbers on a stock cylinder. Uh, it leaves you little to nothing or nothing to work with. It's always going to be a fairly low compression saw. 97 on the exhaust roof for a, 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 a chainsaw that's meant to be a farm saw. And it's, uh, it's not meant to be fast at all. It needs to be able to torque through and power through. Just terrible. Just terrible numbers. So, um, on the screen in front of you, you are going to see a direct comparison of all of the numbers uh, for these saws, or for these cylinders. And, um, yeah, if, if I was to recommend one for you to use at your house, I would recommend the Warhawk. But the problem with this is, is inconsistency. These are cheap cylinders, and this one is probably going to be different than any one that you get. So uh, that's that's that. Anywho, now the one that I am going to use for my build is without a doubt the Dukes. Why is this? Right? Why am I choosing one? that the exhaust is at 95.6, right? Why? Well, I don't want to do any uh, port work, right? The intake is at 77, or I'm sorry, 74.5, but it has, a, it has the lip. Mm. Can you, can you see it? There you go. You see that lip. It's got a big lip right there, right? Like uh, Bubba from Forrest Gump. Anyways, it's got a big lip right there. And if I remove that, we're probably going to be at 77 or 78 uh, degrees uh, opening of the intake. So that's it. And the really, real good thing that I like is that that the transfers are at 119. So the only thing that we've got to actually deal with, right, that, that lip's easy. I can knock that off of there with uh, a chain file. You know, you don't need to even have a Dremel for that. And then this is all about average dude mods, right? Right? So I'll be able to root, re re ow, oof. I'll be able to remove that lip and that is the only porting that i'm going to need to do the exhaust is already crazy high and um, the only thing i got to do is figure out how to get compression to this saw which if you hang around uh, and keep watching average dude mods you'll see exactly how i do it because i am going to give this saw good compression really good compression uh and even though it's going to have that crazy exhaust roof, as well as um, a crazy fat, fat, fat squish band. But I'm still going to have good compression. You'll see how I do it.